In this episode of the Audacity Channel podcast, let's talk for a few minutes about microphone placement. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this episode three of season two of the Audacity Channel podcast. My name is Mike Adams. In this episode, I want to talk to you about microphone placement. That is where we place the microphone in our recording space or our recording room. This becomes important depending on the amount of room conditioning in your room or your space that you're recording in. You see, there really is a method to my madness. Back in episode one, we talked about recording room preparation. And then in episode two, we talked about microphone types. And with that behind us, we're now ready to talk about microphone placement in that room. And the placement of our microphone during recording is related directly to the amount of audio treatments that we have in our recording space or in our room. If I don't have any sound treatments in my room, I'm going to get a lot of echo in that room. And more specifically, if I'm recording in a square room or a rectangular room without any sound treatments on the wall or ceiling or floor, the audio that reverberates in that room is going to converge in the center or near the center of that room. So the first recommendation that I would make concerning microphone placement is not to place it in the center of the room, especially if your room is untreated, because all of those audio reflections are going to come right back to you and get right back into the microphone that you're using. And if you're using a condenser mic, which we talked about previously, every element of the room noise is going to be picked up and heard in your recording, and you're going to have to do something about that or something with that in post-production. So if we can avoid that up front, then we have less to do in post-production and fixing our audio. Now, admittedly, there are a variety of situations, and I can't speak to every possible scenario. So if you have a well-treated room with minimum echo or minimum audio reflections, setting up in the center of the room might not be a problem for you. It's not a problem for me, but I know it can be for other people. And so don't be afraid to experiment with that. Make a test recording in the middle of your room and see what it sounds like, and then move the microphone to another spot of the room, preferably not a corner or facing right against a wall, but maybe just move back away from the center of the room and try it again and see if you notice a difference in the quality of the recording. Recording in the center of the room with an omnidirectional mic, like the Blue Yeti set to omnidirectional mode, can be an audio disaster waiting to happen if your room isn't conditioned well. Now, we're not going to talk about microphone technique in this episode. That's in the next episode. Today, we're just going to talk about microphone placement. In other words, we're putting one more piece of the puzzle into ensuring that we get good audio initially, that our first recording is the best that it can be. And these are just some tips that you might want to be aware of when you're setting up your recording space. Next, I would also add that if you're in an untreated room, you probably don't want to set up your microphone facing a wall. Now, you may be able to get away with that, especially if the room is treated. But if the room is untreated, you're going to get audio reflections right back to you from that wall, back into your microphone, especially in an untreated room that doesn't have carpet or an area rug. These audio reflections, if we're facing the wall, depending on how close to the wall we are, can produce echo and weird audio anomalies in our recording. Now, if you're in a well-conditioned room, that might not be the case. But it's just one more thing to be aware of as you're setting up your audio space or your recording area. And along with that, you want to avoid setting up your recording space such that you're facing a corner. Bass tones or lower tones in our audio like to hang out in the corners of a room. That's where they find their best home. And so if we're facing a corner of a room, especially if the room is untreated, the audio that's reflected back to me may be low enough in frequency to cause additional rumble or low frequency tones in my recording. And so that's something to be aware of. Know that corners are where bass tones or low tones in our voice frequency like to reside. You can help eliminate those bass tones from hanging out in the corners by adding bass traps. These typically are pieces of foam that are designed to go right in the corner that eliminate that sharp corner. They can be a little bit pricey, especially if you have to buy a lot of them, but it's an investment that can be worthwhile. Because again, we don't want that low frequency rumble in our audio. It doesn't do anybody any good. And one way to help avoid that is to install bass traps in the corners of our room. I found that for me personally, speaking out into the center of the room works best. Just like you, my desk is against the wall. It faces the wall. 
and my room is treated well enough to where I can record against that wall with seemingly no problem. But I've also swiveled my chair around and spoken into the room, especially with video. I like to use the wall that my desk is on as a backdrop to the video. And so I simply turn my seat around 180 degrees and I face out into the room and talk that way. And I have found that doing that gives me better audio overall. It's not a huge deal. It's kind of a minor thing, but it's one that I like. And I'm not sitting in the center of the room. I'm sitting against my desk. My desk is to my back. And I'm just talking out into the room. And of course, the room is treated. And in addition to treatments on the floor and the walls, I don't have anything on the ceiling yet, but I do have some soft furniture in the room that helps absorb things. And as soon as we get into our new recording space, it'll be just like my old recording space. And I'll have some soft cloth draped over flat surfaces, pieces of furniture that can reflect audio. All of that adds up. All of that helps. And by speaking into the center of the room, it helps eliminate any echo that does come off of the wall that my desk faces. Now, that, again, that may not be a problem for you. There's a million different scenarios out there. I'm just telling you what works best for mine. And so this is descriptive more than it's prescriptive. And the last thing that I want to talk to you about concerning microphone placement has to do with the number of people speaking in your podcast. If you have a co-host and you're in the same room, being side by side isn't the best scenario. If there's a way to get across a table from one another or a little distance across the room from one another with two different microphones, that's going to help with bleed over. Bleed over happens when one microphone's audio gets into the other track. And if you have two people or more in your podcast, it's a good idea to not sit side by side. If possible, I would advise always recording into multiple tracks when you have multiple speakers, if that's something that's within your reach. When I first started podcasting, there were two of us as co-hosts, and I was recording everything into a single track. And that post-production work was pretty hard because when you're in one track, it's extremely hard to filter out noises that the person who's not speaking might make while the person who is speaking is speaking. That's pretty hard to do. But if we can split that up into two separate tracks, then it becomes much easier. So microphone placement with multiple guests is important. If the scenario in your podcast is to have three people and they're all local in the same room, then spreading them out as much as possible to get some separation of the audio is going to go a long way in creating a good recording initially. And that's going to save you a lot of time in post-production. So th those are just a few of my thoughts on microphone placement. And again, I acknowledge that there's hundreds, if not thousands or millions of different scenarios but I suppose I would leave you with this thought. Find out what works for you. Be aware of who the enemy is. The enemy is corners of the room because bass tones hang out in there. The enemy is an untreated room because audio reflections are going to abound. And so be aware of who the enemy is and how to treat the room or how to place the microphone such that those anomalies that we don't want in our audio don't get into our audio because some of them can take forever to remove and post, and some of them can never be removed. Hey, just a reminder that March Madness is in full swing at the Audacity Boot Camp. If you want a deeper dive into Audacity, check out the Audacity Boot Camp at audacitybootcamp.com. And when you get there, you'll see the code to get 50% off during the entire month of March on both of my courses. And that coupon is simply MADNESS. So during March Madness, which lasts the entire month of March for me, you can get 50% off on both of my courses. There'll be a link to that below in the description, as well as a reminder of that Madness coupon. So head on over there and take a look, because I think you're going to like what you see and hear in the Audacity Boot Camp. Until next time, you all take care.